Hails, I'm Arnat. First of all, if you're asking who is this guy and what is he talking about, then I'd suggest you to check the first video, which was an intro and a teaser, but I also talked a bit about myself too there and what I am trying to do with this series. But as a summarized disclaimer, simply I will talk a lot about World of Warcraft related things and how would I do them if I was given the chance as a long time World of Warcraft player and a gamer with all good intent of constructive feedback, just to make the stuff we all love for years a tiny bit better. I have notes for around 10 episodes worth of subjects already planned, but I'm also open for ideas too, so don't hesitate to send me your suggestions to talk about. After all, we are supporting feedback here together, right? So, with that out of the way, let's start our first episode. How would I do the allied races? Now, if you never played World of Warcraft during Battle for Azeroth, you may have only seen these new races in the character creation tab. Here, the old races left and rightmost, uh, and the new races on the inner part. They're all unlocked and open for me, of course, on my European account, main account. Normally, it does not look like that. Let's switch to my US account and you'll see they're unavailable. Normally, it will look like this for you too, if you have not unlocked any. And to unlock them, you will need to do their own achievements and related quest lines. Of course, I will not get into that in detail. What to do with which to open them? After all, this is not a how to unlock allied races guide video. But no worries, I will leave a guide link at the description of this video. If you need that, check that out. As my version of how I would do it goes, mostly I'm fine with how they are unlocked. Since the reputation requirements are removed, they are quite doable now. Still, maybe it can be a bit more simplified, but not really necessary. So, for the layman, I mean the noobs, <laughs> let's take it from scratch. What are the allied races? Let's see the official side first. So, as you have seen from the character creation screen, these are our good old races as listed on the official Blizzard webpage. And these are our allied races. You see, Blizzard defines allied races like this. Both Alliance and Horde heroes discover new allies by exploring faraway lands. The races below need to be recruited to your faction's cause in-game before you can play them. That's the part what I was talking about, and if you don't know what to do, check the video description for the links I gave to learn. Now, under the hood, technical definition, Wopedia has a very nice definition here. Allied races are from a design point of view, alternate versions of the main races. They mostly use the skeleton of an existing race, but altered and with a different model. They also have their own racial abilities. Allied races get a full character kit, including their own emotes, flirts, funnies, exertions, and so on. All current allied races are variants of a previously playable race with the exception of Volpera, which are only goblins in build. So, to summarize, allied races are the long-awaited alt races, or as some have called, sub-races, that has been talked about for years, and this is how Blizzard have brought them to us with Battle for Azeroth expansion as a side content. And in this episode, I will tell how I would bring them instead, and that's our whole team in this series. Right, no need to keep repeating that, right? 
you are clever viewers after all. But as clever viewers do, you may naturally question in what capacity this dude is having these ideas. And I would say because, unlike many, I have played all of the complete story of Battle for Azeroth expansion. Like I try to do with all expansions and with the general WoW content. If there are lore quests, story, fun, I'm there trying to do that. So for the allied races, what does this mean? It means I have started recruiting and leveling all available allied races even before BFA release with the pre-purchase early access at the end of the Legion. Blizzard has allowed us to recruit the first four and I started unlocking recruiting then worked on each allied race's heritage armors by leveling each one of them from 20 to 110 as they were made available. See, not all of the allied races were open at first, like this. We had the first four before the expansion, two on each side, Void Elf and Lightforged Renai for the Alliance, and Nightborn and High Mountain Taran for the Horde. These could have been unlocked, means you could do the required achievements needed. Recruited means you could open a character with that race or race change. Then you could work on their heritage arms. And that means level them from 20 to 110 without any level boost or recruit a friend thingies. Then we got them by one each made available as Battle for Azeroth progressed. When the expansion went live, we could recruit Dark Iron Dwarf and Maghar Orc uh, when we completed the first set of war campaign quests. Second batch included Kultiran Human and Zandalari Troll. They came with patch uh, 815. And finally, Mechagnome and Vulpera became available with 8.3. As I have said, I have unlocked all of the allied races and their heritage armors. Also, I have all the old races heritage armors too. But it would be too much of a showing off uh, in this video uh, to show you all that. And it would be a serious waste of time. So I will instead link those all in the video description to give you an idea about it. You can check them out uh, for their own stories and details with lots of screenshots etc as i said it's not a hard thing to do at all it was quite fun and with the all lore quests uh, it was very entertaining so i would strongly suggest everyone who loves world of warcraft to unlock each one of them too so long story short i kind of have some idea what i'm talking about here With that reference, allied races and how would I do it? Now, personally to start with, I have a major problem with the name of the project. Since one of our two faction is literally called the Alliance, I would strictly stay away from naming the project Allied because it considers both factions and Horde having allied races Sounds like a bad assimilation job. Yurel, I'm looking at you here. And you know, I'm not prejudiced or biased about this. If you didn't know, actually in a Mists of Pandaria promotional video, Chris Metzen used the phrase allied races for the first time to refer to Alliance's allies on Kalimdor. So, you know, just following Master Metzen's guidance here, and in that sense, to start with how I would do it, I would name them differently for either faction. Like, for Alliance, Allied Nations for the new races, and new alliances for the new customization unlocks. I will come to that customization unlock thing right away. Just a bit patience. And for the Horde side, Bloodbounded for the new races and Blood Pacts for the customization on Lex. Of course, these names are just from the top of my head. Maybe not perfect, but to give the idea of what I mean, 
After all, I'm not a twenty people solo think tank. Just throwing suggestions here. And if we all think on it, I guess we can all come up with a lot more creative and fitting name, names even. Throw some around in comments if you want. I trust you guys. But beyond naming, technically, what do we aim to be getting with this project? Our aim is new, alternative, and a bit hard to get playable WoW races. But Blizzard brought is, as Wopedia has said, mostly similar models with original races but alternate versions of them. Now, what I would offer is, like in the naming I suggested. 1. Give proper playable alternative races with relatively more original looks but using mostly the same skeletons and models which are also already in the game too, just not playable, like the Zandalari, Nightborn and the High Elf were. So, we will call these with their related categories for each faction, Allied Nations and Bloodbounded. And 2. If the race is too close to the existing ones, then give them as alternate customization options for the old races. Not as playable races, but as unlockable, mix and matchable, enhanced customization options for the original races. Just like the Night Warrior eyes for the Night Elves. We will technically call all of these customization unlocks. And for their factions, new alliances for alliance and blood pacts for the horde. Alright then. Let's sum up. What do we have now? Void Elf, Lightforged Draenei, Dark Iron Dwarf, Cool Tyran, and Mechanome for the Alliance. Nightborn, High Mountain Tauren, Malkar Orc, Zandalari Troll, and Vulpera for the Horde. To be fair, personally, I am fine with some of them. But if it was up to me, and with the logic of approach I have just explained for naming, I will do it like this. Here we go, the big picture is coming. Ta-da! <laughs> 5 new playable races for both factions. 10 in total. As allied nations we have High Elf, Highborn, Lightbound Orc, the Broken Draenei, and Raikul as the new alliance races. And as Bloodbounded, Eredar, Nightborn, Moknatal Orc, Ogre, and Vulpera as the new Horde races. Additionally, these customization unlocks for both factions. As new alliances, Draenei's get Lightforge customizations. Dwarves get Dark Iron, Wild Hammer, and Frostborn customizations. Humans get Kultiran. And Gnomes get Mecha Gnome and Leopard Gnome customizations. And there's Blood Pacts. Horde will get Orcs and Makar customizations. Trolls will get Zandalari, Amani, and Drakari customizations. Taurans get Taunka and High Mountain customizations and Forsaken will get all of the Undead customizations including Dark Rangers. Now, naturally at first glance this list may create some questions and counter arguments so to calm those doubts down a bit I'll shortly elaborate each race by explaining my reasoning why and how we can implement them technically and lore-wise. For the races, I won't read just the text in the images. You will see I have made some racial suggestions. You can pause and read them if you want. I will also put them up on my ArtStation page too and drop the link at the video description. So you can check them out later if you want. So let's start. For the Alliance, no bias, no worries. 
general theme of recruiting the Alliance races can stay the same. One main quest line for introduction and then separate quest lines each to recruit each playable race, each customization unlock and each related heritage stuff. Of course, like the last change, no reputation should be needed from the start. Just some required levels, unlocking some zones should be enough. Main key point should be just their own lore quest lines for each race. Similar with current recruitment quests or heritage storylines. With that out of the way, let's start with the races I have suggested. And of course, first the highly debated and greatly requested for years, none other than High Elves. Yes, let's be honest, instead of these made up Void Elves, we would all prefer High Elves, which already have their own separate lore and skin since Wrath of the Lich King, and even before. Lore-wise, we could combine Aleria's Void Mingling with these new playable High Elves, and they could have a racial activated with Binding with Void. They wouldn't have funny tentacles and other all corrupt look, which none of the most devout Twilight Hammer members don't even have for years. I mean, come on, right? Also, I must add this, we should not have High Elf customization options with Blood Elves, but instead maybe more magic addicted team added to them to differentiate. Like what we have on Burning Crusade cover, and with this awesome male Blood Elf art thanks to Glen Rain, face tattoos, magic runes, crazier and more evil looks, like, you know, lore-wise Blood Elves are quarter wretched anyways, they literally can't live without magical energy, so let them show it, I mean if they want to. Because let's be honest, a Blood Elf Mage, or especially a Warlock with blue glowing eyes is not fitting with the fantasy of the race at all. So let's keep those races separate as they should be. Give fell glowing eyes, thinner faces and body types, more built body types for warriors and paladins, etc. And yes. High Elves should be able to be Paladins too, it's just fair that way. But we can add an annoying painful scream when they use their void related ratio, because they would burn with shadow and light, yet still choose to do so. For power maybe. Maybe a fun detail. And for classes go, we have no rogues, especially no warlocks or demon hunters. With racial traits, we have the enhanced and altered version of the Void Elf racial in Tropic Embrace. So you can transform at will like your racial leader Alaria Windrunner and look like a normal High Elf like her at other times. For the fantasy of the race and how they are trying to avoid using magical energy, I suggest these two rations, Magical Drought, it's a passive debuff, and Withdrawal Suppression Meditation, it's a channeled spell. If you don't meditate once a day, the Magical Drought will build up one stack every hour and at 24 stacks it will temporarily turn you into a Mindless Wretched, until another player heals you with magical spells so you can come back to your original self. With the meditation spell, you will go down on your knees, enforce your willpower and meditate to suppress your magical energy addiction. If you complete your 10 second meditation once a day, your magical drought debuff will be cleansed and pushed away. You will also gain 1% damage and healing for 24 hours with the 
Wheel of the High Elf buff. That will last for 24 hours and it will persist through death. The racial mount of High Elves will be Kveldorai Void Steed. It will be a gift of Aleria Windrunner and it will come from a Void Portal when summoned. The original version is Kveldorai Steed. It comes from the Argent Crusade. This one is the Void Enhanced version. It may have some subtle Void effects and as I said it will come from a Void Portal when summoned. And as High Elf customizations go, they can be more built compared to Blood Elves. Have unique tattoos like Aleria to fight against magical addiction, opposite with Blood Elves, Nightborn and Highborn. They will have magical runes that help to focus and intake of magical energy. Instead, for High Elves, these tattoos will prevent magical energy to leave the High Elves body and keep what they have. So they should look more tribal instead of magical. With that, let's continue with our second alliance race. Highborn. When Horde is getting the Nightborn, Alliance should also be able to recruit their own elite Elven race, which with Cataclysm had already made their re-entry lore-wise anyways. You know, since then Night Elves can become mages too, thanks to the Highborn. We can keep that, since Night Elves can keep learning Arcane Arts from Highborn, but we can enhance that integration and use that storyline to have our separate and unique Highborn race. In lore, the Highborn don't really look like our current playable Night Elves, because of their long time attunement to magic they have actually evolved differently and as magical transformation from Well of Eternity goes, in thousands of years we can say they have become the best a Night Elf can be because the Highborn were at the central cast, closest to Queen Ashara, so they are the highest level of Azerotian Elves. And by the way, I mean, who wouldn't want to play as the original look of Ashara and her cool followers, right? Those would be the Highborn again. The uncorrupted, non-satirized <laughs> and non-Naga converted scaly ones, of course. And as Naga and Satyr as a playable race go, that's a no for me too, sorry, but we will come to those at the end, a bit more patience. About the highborn classes, yes, they can be warlock, but no warrior. Highborn are too elegant to be warriors, but they use infiltration, spies and assassins, so they will have rogues. With those classes, they can use those thinner but more elegant, taller body types with a lot more chiseled, artsy faces, differentiating from their rough and wild Night Elf brethren. Racial traits I'm suggesting for Highborn start with Eternal Connection. Thanks to your remaining connection to Azeroth's essence and to the Well of Eternity's powers, your spell casts are not delayed by taking damage. Yes, it's originally a Void Elf racial, but Highborn deserve it more, because they are mostly spellcasters. Second one is Titanic Empowerment. It's a 3 minute cooldown, mini personal bloodlust. It resembles the troll racial with a twist since troll is the 
original unevolved form of night elves. It's like this is the titan empowered version of them with this ratio, thanks to well of 20s powers. It increases your size, haste and versatility by 10% for 20 seconds. Third one is Leyline Attunement. It's a passive, gives you 1% intellect and 10% increased mana. This also fits the race's fantasy and hints where their magical powers come from. And it says you instinctively attune to magical ley lines of any planet or dimension you step on and increases your intellect and mana. So they wouldn't be only strong with magic at Azeroth's surface. They can go anywhere and attune to the place's magical powers and ley lines and be at the same magical strengths. The racial mount is Hippogriff of the Highborn. They are the traditional mounts of the Highborn in lore. I say they may be attuned to magical powers and able to sense the ley lines of Azeroth, maybe. Naming is a little reference to the Lament of the Highborn of Sylvanas. About the Highborn customizations. The Highborn role model should be Queen Ashara's elf form. They will of course use Night Elf skeletons, but as I said, faces and instead of wild and rough uh, like Night Elves, their facial and bodily features should look a lot more elegant, smooth, chiseled, and a lot more snob even more than Blood Elves. They are also more magically transformed and evolved compared to outer castes where the wild night elves come from. So they should have more lighter skin colors, bigger glowing eyes with white and more golden tones. They should also have arcane and light versions of Nightborn and Blood Elf magical rune tattoos. Their body types should be thinner, as I said, and a bit more taller too, since they are mostly a spellcasting race of elites who don't bother with physical face-to-face -face combat or any kind of labor at all. And now, let's do a complete 180 for the Alliance. Our next race is Lightbound Orc. Now, this may create some controversy, but it's not my original idea at all. I have first seen it suggested in detail at MMO Champion Forms by Ardenaso. I will link it in the description. And it's very plausible too. After all, if Horde is recruiting Night Elves in some form, why not give Alliance their own orcs? Yirel's Lightbound and her forcefully converting a lot of alternate Draenor orcs to Lightbound by force is our lore way in for them too. Very doable and very fitting. They would have Lightforged Draenei like features like light tattoos, shiny white golden eyes, thinner and more elegant standing bodies like Zandalari have for trolls, Their recruitment scenario would be the other side of Maghar questline and would show us the other side of the coin and in the end, just like how Maghar are joining the Horde, Lightbound Orc clan would join the Alliance. Very fitting and it's already in the lore. And as Lightbound Orc classes go, first is of course Paladin. Yay, Orc Palis! And no Warlocks because of Light, and of course no Shamans because again, thanks to the Light they are over their tribal culture now. For the Racials, I have offered 
two unique passives for Lightbound.org. First one focuses on their light tattoos. It's named Lightbound Engravings. Your tattoos of light occasionally shine brightly, empower you and allow you to do 5% more damage or healing as light with your spells and attacks. This effect has a 33 chance per minute to proc. The buff gained has 10 second duration, also has a 1 minute internal cooldown. When the buff is active, your attacks and spells will do 5% of that as light and or heal for that amount. The second one is the counter version of the original Maghar Racial and it's a reference to the Light Force Drenai Racial. It's named Ancestral Reconing and spirits of your Orcish ancestors attempt to cleanse you when you die and you erupt with light upon that, it will deal X amount of holy damage to all enemies within 10 yards and heal the allies for the same amount. We can also use some other light force Draenei racials for these and borrow some other racials maybe from similar races since they are no more in the setup we can use them. The racial mount should be Garn Light Hall. Of course, it's a reference to the Garn Night Hall. And after becoming light bound, these orcs have captured the most fears of the Draenor's Garn and empowered them with light with the help of Yrel. So these new walls should have glowing white eyes and light features. And as customization notes go, for the light bound to be distinct from Orcs of the Horde, these should have various Draenei looking hairdos. They can even have that light rune on their forehead, can be chosen like Lightforge can do now, Light tattoos, of course, are a must since it will be their main racial trait. White and golden glowing eyes also should be a default. Facial expressions should be a lot more calm and smooth. And as the body types go, these should not have a hunched option like the original orcs and Magar, of course and be a little more thinner compared to other orcs. And while we were talking about the Draenei, how about their corrupt and forsaken brethren, the broken Draenei? Now, these two are not my original idea either, but great minds think alike and you can find various awesome fan art concepts of these two, a lot more of them even. And that's why instead of the light forged Draenei, we can and should recruit these poor guys, either coming from Outland or Argus. With some skin difference, we can do some quests to unlock some skins for either side. They are both tough beings, survived hardships, looking broken in body but unbroken in spirit. They would be great additions to the roster and since the Burning Crusade they are practically in anyways, only empowered with Legion side. Also Alliance needs some uglies too. For the Broken Draenei classes, we will have no priest for these. They are too corrupt to use the light according to the lore, but hey, they can be warlocks thanks to all that fell corruption. And most importantly, they can be druids thanks to that close encounters with Zangar Marsh scenario elves. 
We can use the culture and druid forms with a fell taint for the broken. We can say the corruption makes them look like that. And yes, for culture and forms, that trust connection and the story was cool, but you all know this is a lot more fitting. If Drust becomes playable one day, they can be druids like that too. For their racial traits, I gave some very tempting suggestions and I guess you will like these. First one is called Survivor and it gives a passive increase to strength, agility and intellect and it scales with your level. It's the exact same racial with the Draenei, with a twist in the naming and team. The Unbroken Will is the second one, again fitting with their fantasy. It has a two minute cooldown and it will give uh, an enragement to you. The memories of the hardships you have endured will enrage you and it will increase a random secondary stat for 12 seconds. Yes, it's that Maghar Orc ratio, but again with a twist. And the third one is Adept Miner. Your enhanced survival skills allow you to mine ores quickly and effectively. Also, you are able to mine when mounted and in druid forms. Now, isn't this tempting or what? Tower and Druids had that for herbalism since forever. Now Alliance can have this too. You're all welcome. And for their racial mount, I thought about a Fell Adept Zangari Saber. These elusive predators hide so well in the wilds of Zangar Marsh no adventurer has seen them before. That's why you didn't see them. Yet the Broken have managed to befriend them while hiding together. So they are saber mounts, but you have never seen them in Zangar much before. As their customizations go, the Broken is of course takes role model as Akama and Nobunto. You have seen some official looking female designs too and there are very well done fan arts which make it look very plausible as a playable race. As I said according to the lore they are unable to connect with light anymore and with adapting to survive in fell corrupted outland and Argus they should also carry these features. Their skin colors should be in dark tones of red and purple. Their eyes should have tones of fell green glow. Their features should also include scales like demon hunters have. And extended tentacles, tails and horns like the original designs already have. They should have a hunched and straight body type for both males and females. And facial features may also feature uh, monstrous mouth designs like the one Akama has. And finally, as the fifth and last alliance race, one of the most expected races ever, Raikul. Now, instead of a human race, like Kultiran, why not get an original race? If you want giants, they are literally half giants. And again, not one of my original ideas, but clearly a fan favorite. There are lots of fun concepts made under the name of Raikul Allied Race. And uh, Skirdus's post on MMO Champion forums is one of my favorites, so I will mostly modify his suggestions and enhance it a bit with my own ideas. 
with their deep lore based on references coming from Nordic myths. Lore wise, these guys have a huge potential. I mean, literally. You can integrate them from any angle. Hell, even make them a race like Pandaren, if you want, where they can choose their faction freely after introduction. They would fit both sides perfectly. They can either be Alliance or Horde. But for this concept, let's keep them on the Alliance for now. Technically, the playable Raikul need to be a bit shorter than their NPC versions. Of course, to fit from doors and such, but still, we can make them as tall as Tauren and even taller than Kultira. And you know, player night elves are not tall as Tyrande either. Same deal goes here too. Model wise, they are already in game, both as male and female, with tons of customization options already integrated in game. So, relatively, with small tweaks, they can be made playable very easily. Compared to lots of other races, and the other introduced ones, they are a lot easier to integrate. Considering the post-Legion era, we should reintroduce them as playable with an Aeir related story. Of course, Aeir would not choose sides, but the Tidescorn, previously led by God King Skowalt, now trampled by God Queen Sigrin, and united the Stormheim clans, she can easily join the alliance after the Sylvanas Aeir event. And as proto humans who have once defended Silver Hand of Tyr, they can easily become friends with Stormwind and its paladins too. With that said, we now have one of the most adaptable races. Yes, they can be both shamans as seers, paladin thanks to Tyr, and druid because it's already in game. They really already know it all. As Raikul racial traits go, these are inspired by Sigrin's combat skills and other race racials. First one is Spear of Vengeance with 2 minute cooldown. You hurl a spear through the air and when it lands, it inflicts fire damage to all targets within 5 yards of it. Second one is Titanic Growth. Your size, damage and healing increases for a short amount. I set 5% for 10 seconds. And as a Raikul, you're a craftmaster. Your crafting skill is superior. Any crafting is done 50% faster and has a higher chance to level up. Your racial mount is of course a Tidescorn Ursa, a giant beer. Tidescorn have bred and trained these beers to ride them into battle not just as mounts, but also as companions and deadly weapons. Finally, customization side of Raikul. As I said, technically we already have all the models needed. They just need some more tweaks to be playable. But as more customizations go, we can add more tattoo options, facial tattoos with more colors, more tribal and Nordic designs can be added, resembling Vikings of course. There are already lots of hair options, but we can borrow some from humans and other races too. Not as exact ones, but like the inspirations and crude Raikul versions. Females can also have Viking style jewelry options, shield maiden hairdos, and all those extra stuff. 
It's such an open area, I bet any designer would love to go wild with really cool customization options, so I will just let them fly free. By the way, what are the customization unlocks and how can we implement them? Now, let's take a look at how we can unlock more customization options for the old Alliance races with the help of our current in-game allied races. First of all, by using in-game races, we increase the options that we can use on a single character to make it more unique. Certain hairstyles, colors and options won't be locked for two different races with the same model and skeleton. Instead, it will enhance the already integrated ones. We can add a new tab under the current races when we unlock these and treat as a separate race, but with adding certain options to the old ones too. That way it will also be like a second pass of additional customization enhancements for the all races too. As an example, think it like this. You unlock Light Forge for the Draenei. Now, when you go to the barber shop with your Draenei, or when creating a new character, you have the Light Forge tab there. You either go there and create a full Light Forge looking Draenei, or you customize your current Draenei. Uh, with the new look, with the new additions that come with unlocking the light force, like a new light rune that you can show off in front of your forehead, or that new beard, that lighter glowing eyes, you get the idea. Of course, unlocking these should also grant you their racial mounts too, with the achievement that goes without saying. So. With that logic, how can we unlock these customizations for the Alliance site? I say Lightforge Draenei can be unlocked the same way. Instead of recruiting a whole new race, we'll be able to unlock these new appearances as Draenei. And when unlocked, we'll be able to change our current Draenei characters to Lightforge skins. Same with every one of these. Think it like the Night Warrior Eye Color Edition, but with a whole lot of choices and options. Dark Iron, Wildhammer and Frostborn Dwarves are the addition to the Dwarf race. As we've seen, Wildhammer are already added like this. So let's step back on Dark Iron skins like that too. While we're at it, Let's not forget the good old Frostborn Dwarves of Stormpeaks and side of Uldar. Because the skeleton rig and the basic appearance of the races are exactly the same. No need to make it a new race. Instead, we can use our resources to add more Dwarf customization options that would apply to any one of these races like stylish beards for female dwarves too? No? Why not? It's in the lore. Kultiran human customizations unlocked for human. Yes, body types are different, but basically they are humans and making them a separate race is not logical. So let's add them all to humans as body types and as customization options, including thin human models too. So Alliance can have their good old living lower their own skins back. Skinny is even. Of course, this way we can also use female forsaken skeleton rig, but not with that human outer look for female humans too. More options, more fun. Gnome customizations to be unlocked are 
of course, mecha gnomes and leopard gnomes. Again, current mecha gnomes are so similar to gnomes, and let's be honest, not a very tempting race to play with. Not because they are worse gnomes, but because most of their mechanized parts prevent showing off your armors. So, if we could add mecha gnomes as customization options to the current gnomes, then we could make it more detailed, like one arm, one leg, part of it, or only head and eyes. If they are mechanized, then it would be more unique. And we should have used the Uldar base models for mecha gnomes too, since it's their original source anyways. Oh, by the way, yes, leopard gnomes are now saved so let's not forget to add them to the mix. Just do the gnome starting quests and finish gnome regan and there you have your leopard gnome customization options unlocked. Additionally, since in this concept I have scrapped almost all of the void elf content, I must also accept their heritage armor and mounts were quite awesome, so we can add those with an Aleria quest to High Elves as an extra story quest chain. In the end, we can unlock some logical customization options, hair without tentacles, violet toned eye colors and purplish void resembling skin for fitting classes like shadow priests or warlocks but just with one condition no one should never ever say anything like void elf ever deal cool okay and with them i guess we're done with the alliance side so let's move to the horde races and how i would do that part If you remember, we named Horde's new playable races as Bloodbounded. But how will we get them? As I have said from the start, we should differentiate Horde with Alliance recruitment team and also in pattern. So these races should have one general introduction questline and a Bloodbound and Blood Pact team, which means loyalty and surviving together. And in this team, that should be central for each of them at that point. So, here we go. For the Horde. Again, no bias here, no worries. I play both sides, I designed for both. So, here we go. Our first. Horde races Arada. Yes, the original Arada. The now fell enhanced version of the Draenei. Maybe you heard, but at several times it was rumored that Arada would become a Horde race. So now is the time. But why? And with what capacity Arada would join the Horde? Well, we all know Legion is now defeated. Will of Sargeras and his main commanders Kil'jaeden and Archimond is no more. Argus, the death titan which was giving the Legion and Eredar their relatively immortal status, is also not there anymore. So many, if not all, Eredar are now aimless. I would guess Many would be regretful even. In that situation, where to turn if you want to survive and redeem yourself? Of course, the Horde. Think it like this. Forsaken are actually undead of Scourge, created by Arthas, the Lich King. It's the same MO with Eredar, the fell empowered 
demonic Eredar of Burning Legion were created by Sargeras. But just like Forsaken, thanks to Sylvanas, undead with their own free will, free of Lich King's control, are now part of the Horde. With the same exact logic, the rogue Eredar, who are now possibly resentful of what Sargeras did to them and regretful about their actions, would join Horde and fight side by side with them, adding the immense knowledge and first-hand experience against many beings of the Warcraft universe. On your side, they would be incredibly useful mainly against the enemies of Azeroth and then their prejudiced fanatical brethren on the other side at the Alliance. That's how the fantasy would fit. Their recruitment scenario could even be built upon this. How they would come to Valen for forgiveness, be rejected and even attacked by the alternate URLs Lightbound, now empowered with orcs even. Then they would escape and ask Horde for help. Technically, we could easily use the same Draenei skeleton rigs and models, alter them with more reddish skin colors, fell glowing eyes, more demonic horns and customization, if wanted, they can use more demonic looks too, just like how demon hunters can. So very easy to adapt, very easy to do, very fitting in the lore too. Okay, happy Eradar's reds, let's move on to the classes. Of course, they will have warlocks and all other possible classes, not the light ones, but priests. Their racial traits, I designed them by twisting the Draenei Racials, especially the first two ones. The Gift of Argus, 3 minute cooldown one, is instant, it's 30 yard range and it's a ranged attack. It damages the target for 5% of their health over 6 seconds with a damage over time, Shadow Flame, Dot, and heals you for that amount. And the second one is Demonic Presence. It's a passive, it increases your main stat by a scaled amount. And the third one is uh, an Eredar special, it's called Bane of Mortals. And your years of service in Burning Legion gave you knowledge against humanoids in combat. Experience gained from killing humanoids is increased by 20%, including player characters. Again, this is a tweaked version of the Light Force Draenei ratio, that's that one called Demon Bane. But this one, I suppose, will make this race very popular for PvP, if implemented. And the last ratio is called Demonic Resistance. Again, it's the enhanced and reversed version of the Draenei ratio. It reduces your shadow and fire damage taken by 2%, not 1. Eradar's racial mount is inspired by the Lightforged Warframe and the Vigilant Constructs in Makari. And Special thanks to my Lord Council buddy Kalena here for the mount idea. Thanks, dude. And this racial mount is called Felbound Vigilant, and it says normally empowered by a soul of an Eredar. These versions use a Fel crystal instead to serve as an interstellar armored mount for the Eredar. And we have a small flavor text here, inside joke, and the customization notes for the Eredar I can add are like this. Well, we are literally recruiting demons, but sadly we can't give wings or extreme modifications to them like they were in the Legion, 
After all, Legion is defeated and Sargeras is gone. These guys have lost their actual powers and this playable version is just a remnant of what Sargeras has empowered once. So think of these as demonically modified fell versions of the Draenei. So they will keep those features and base will be the same. But to differentiate and to make them distinct, and as I have said before, we should only give them red and dark purple skin tones, green glowing eyes, and a fell version of the forehead rune using old legion and eredar icons. Bigger, more threatening horns and fell wounds are also a must and an option of course. Tattoos are optional, but they should be cornered and harsh designs. Opposite versions of the Light Forge tattoos, resembling the Demon Hunter ones maybe. After all, they're coming from the same source, but they should be more precise instead of tribal looking. The second horde race is a mostly unchanged one, Nightborn. Well, we have to accept, they are almost perfectly done, perfectly brought in with their recruitment, yet what I would do is what anyone would do first, alter them to look more like their NPC counterparts. What I mean is, we should not make them that thin and make them look in taller and more intimidating instead. Give a lot more visible nightwell based magical roots, facial tattoos even. Since they are also magic addicted just like their blood elf counterparts and that's actually why they have joined the horde because blood elves get them and can empathize with them on every level even, but instead Night Elves shun them and see them as lesser beings, addicts. So overall small adjustment to make them look more built up and cool and that's it. As a one final suggestion, I would make a bigger and more useful phased version of Suramar, picturing it more as a horde city in use, even as an alternative to Orgrimmar maybe, because after all Suramar is the greatest city ever designed in WoW without comparison. Maybe if we could see a remade version of Silver Moon, maybe, but you know, if we had that it would greatly help with telling about the fantasy of the new horde too. So, one may wish. As Nightborn classes go, I wouldn't change the allied race versions, it's quite fitting, but racial traits can be kept same with life, but they need some tweaks to be more useful. For example, arcane affinity can be made into a passive and that way, in combat, your arcane rune tattoos will recharge, just like the lightbound ratio I have suggested. And when glow, those tattoos will, will allow you to do 5% more damage and healing with your spells and attacks. They also have 33% chance, chance to proc. The buff gained will have 10 second duration. It will also have a 1 minute internal cooldown and when the buff is active your attacks and spells will replicate a 5% version of that attack and or heal for that same amount. I mean the 5% And it's a tweaked version of the Lightbound or creation. That one was Light, this one is Arcane. And Arcane Pulse ratio I changed it to 1 minute cooldown and this time in my version 
you will explode with arcane energy. But keep that explosion on yourself as a bubble for 10 seconds. That bubble won't take damage. It won't be about absorbing damage. It will just damage your surrounding enemies. And you will keep that on yourself. And that will reduce enemy spell casting, attack speed and moon, movement speed by 30%. Friendly targets who pass through your bubble will get 10% movement speed for 3 seconds in that 10 yard range. So I will change it to that. Another passive is magical resistance. That's also already in game and it will reduce all magical damage taken by 1%. Nightborn Racial Mount should be unarmored mana saber. I called that wild mana saber and I said after cleansing Suramar and surroundings from the Legion these sabers became a lot more friendly and allowed locals to ride them without reins and binds. You know, the same mounts you used on Blay Race World Quests. Same thing. As Nightborn customization goes, physically, considering the effects of the Night Vale, the Nightborn are in between the Wild Night Elves and Vale of Eternity Faded Highborn. So, considering the original model of the Night Elves, they should be the bulkiest of all the related races. Nightborn should be in the middle, with the effects of Night Vale added, and Highborn should be the thinniest and most physically weak yet elegant standing ones. And while we are at it, Blood Elves and High Elves are also related to these and in lore they really have zero reason to look that shrinked and shorter. They should at least be as tall as the Nightborn. Yes, now Talisra and Lord Tamar are a canon height joke but lore wise, logically, they have both Nightborn and Blood Elves have evolved from the magical energies of the similar sources, Nightwell and Sunwell. In lore, that's why they feel a kinship and more empathy towards each other too. While the Night Elves, especially their leader Tiranda, literally shuns them both, cruelly. So, Long story short, because of that magical addiction, they also should have more visible and stronger magical rune tattoos that compensate their need in magical energy to survive, just like Blood Elves. High Elves choose the opposite and reject magical addiction, but in my concept you have seen that I have designed their own racials, especially built on that concept. So. They may look similar at first, but evolving powers effects and magic addiction changes should look stronger on both Blood Elves and the Nightborn. Just like Blood Elves, they should look quarterly wretched, with that magic addiction somewhat slightly showing. Also, like Blood Elves should be, that would make them look a tiny bit evil and crazy looking. But that's how it should be all along anyways. So, to summarize, they should look a lot more like their NPC counterparts, have a lot more magical rune customizations on them. They should look crazier and a bit evil like the NPCs, and a bit more bulked in exec between with Night Elves and the Highborn.
And the next horde race is another fun favorite, Moknatal Orc. Now, you may ask, you have removed Magar Orcs as a customization option, but you want Moknatal as a separate race. And I will say yes, I do, but ask me why. And this will be the answer that I will give to you. Moknatal are not orcs, they are not ogres, they are a hybrid with a different culture. So Moknatal are both physically and mentally different from both orcs and ogres. Maghar are not that different. They are biologically same with orcs. They are just not mildly corrupted with fell, but in the bases they are the same race. Our green orcs, which Thrall is also a part of, are not that mutated to become another race than Maghar. For comparison, the ones in Outland are totally different. The fell orcs. They are mutated beyond recognition. So with that clear distinction out of the way, there is not much left to tell. Of course, besides our racial Moknatal prince and role model, especially with his latest model, Rexar. Of course, Outland and Moknatal grounds there should be their capital and in lore they have already joined the Horde long ago. Now they can join as a playable race too. As the Moknatal classes go, beyond the usual ones, they can be Druids. Yes, Moknatal being a Druid is practically a given. They are integrated with nature and good friends with animals even an outland state. So, they would have pretty unique forms that would look quite fitting with their racial fantasy and theme. Lore-wise, just like the Broken, Moknatal can also learn it from Scenarion Elves to help them fight against demons and to protect and fix the broken natural environment around them. Their racial traits should also carry that same theme. So what I'm offering is there's a Moknatal Warhorn one with a two minute cooldown. You call for the beast on your side to fight for you for 20 seconds. While the beast is with you, your versatility will also increase by 5%. The second racial is ultimate beastmaster. This will increase damage dealt by hunter and death knight pets by 2% unlike the 1% of the orcs because they are superior. And the next racial is silent tracker. This is a modified version of the night elf racial shadow melt because they are hunters it's in their culture so when you use this you will silently hide and become camouflaged. This will reduce your chance for enemies to detect your presence. Also, additionally, you will able to move with 50% speed until detected. It will last until cancelled or upon entering combat. Any threat will be restored when you are detected. So it will be similar with Shadow Melt in that sense. So think it like a weaker camouflage of the Hunters, but for every class. The Moknatal racial mount should be Moknatal Blade Links. I thought about this because of Leorox's companion, Tetic. It's a lynx, and I thought these as specially bred giant lynx of Blades Edge Mountains, which are the fellow companions and mounts of Moknata. And as customization side goes, 
as I said, our role model with this new outlook is of course Rexar. Whoever did that NPC design is totally perfect, totally nailed it. So thanks for it. So just like how he is modeled for his latest NPC look, we can make playable Moknata like this too. Less pointed tasks, bigger frame, between orc and ogre height, lighter and more ogre looking skin colors, racial, unique tribal tattoos and unique customization options that reflect their Moknatals, wild, secluded, spiritual, tribe life, style and culture. And of course, their druid cat form should be a lynx. Beer form should look like Misha, Rexar's pet. And flight form should of course look like a wyvern and such. By the way, while we're talking about beast mastery, I must say, this would be a great chance to save the terrible situation of the hunter specs. Especially beast mastery and survival are in terrible place fantasy wise. Yes, beast mastery is the easiest spec to play ever, especially now. But you can literally face roll that and it's not that fun and its fantasy is not fitting with the team. So again, Rexar should be our role model here and BM should be the proper version of that dual wielding melee hunter spec allowing us to fight with the help of our pets and survival should be turned into a part melee poison and trap based ranged spec that we used to love during cataclysm times for example that could be modernized and it should have the pet thing optional just like markmanship have which is quite good it's sniper like mood just fits the theme and fantasy perfectly just some small adjustments and it would also be perfect then all three specs would feel a lot more different and would also fit with their fantasy too so Let's save Beastmaster. Hashtags. You won't believe it, but maybe after Murlocs, the next horde race is the most popularly requested one. Ogre. Now, come on. This was a long time coming wish for all of us. And when, if not right now, right? There are already ogre clans that are members of the horde and we can build our very nice and fun recruitment scenario over them. We can combine ogre clans into one big clan and give them a place on the council. Not all ogres are that dumb you know, especially the two-headed ones. While we're at it, I'm saying this here, by default all ogre caster classes should have two heads and that should be an ogre thing. They should have special dialogue options and your chat lines should look like Chogal speaking. A simple chat AI bot that's run from client side can easily do that for every player. Of course, there should be an option to turn that off too, just in case. Besides, while we're at it, all naming should allow apostrophes too. It's the year 2021 and in-game we're practically bosses at this level. We deserve our name dividers, surnames and such, especially two-headed ogres too. Of course, when introduced, these should be one of the biggest and tallest playable races. So they should be at tower and size at least. We don't see many female ogres in game or maybe none. 
but we also know they exist. Also, we've seen various fun arts and fun models. I've put some of them here. Very plausible and proper stuff had been made. We all know Blizzard artists can do a lot better version of these. Ogres can be the expected classes, starting with Shaman, of course, and Warrior. They can also be Mage, Warlock, Hunter, Rogue, Priest, and of course Monk and Death Knight. I have offered two fun racial traits for them. First one is Headbutt. It's a two minute cooldown, like a Tauren's Stomp thingy. It has a very low casting time and it's used in melee range. You mindlessly slam your enemies with your four heads, if you have two heads. It damages your target for 5% of their health and stuns them for 2 seconds. The second one is Thick Headed in the same team of course. It's a passive and it lowers the duration of silence and slowing effects. Also, it gives you a partial mind control resistance because ogres are thick headed. The racial mount I'm thinking for ogres is the biggest one in game, a cleft hoof. It's the boulder fist giant hoof, the largest and strongest of the cleft hoof but also the most patient and calm enough to put up with their ogre riders. And as customization goes, ogre model should need an overall polish and the proper female version, as I said, to be playable. But again, I totally trust Blizzard designers about that. First of all, as I have said, caster classes should have the option for two heads. They should have options to have one or two eyes for either head. There should also be various four head single horn types. For extra details, javelry like nose rings, piercings, rings, tooth variations, and piercings, scars facial war paint tattoos, body tattoos, they would all make them quite distinct and unique. As body type goes, I guess generally an enhanced and hairless pandaran skeleton with longer legs, humanoid hands and feet would do the trick, you know, at first glance. A modified version of that would also work for females too. Of course, their facial expressions should look a bit dull, but also a bit evil too. After all, they can be warlock and rogue, and there are lots of very cunning ogres in lore. So, fun aside, we should give them the general team of slow, but not to be underestimated. Finally, the Horde's last allied race is also the last blood bond race, Vulpera. Vulpera are almost perfect. Even I can't find that much to add or change something with them. Yes, they use goblin rigs, but they are really badass and all their team, recruitment and racials are perfect. I would only tweak their appearance to look a bit more taller than goblins. Also, I would add a lot of scar and wearing off effects showing their desert lifestyle. To their customization options we can add those to make them look less cute and more battle hardened. We can also give them the option of longer manes hair options for both males and females like pandarans have and 
a lot more racial desert accessories like face covers, eye covers to protect one from sandstorms, headbands, etc. I generally like their racials too, but only the rummage your bag with 5 minute cooldown seems both a bit confusing and not very useful either. So I say we can simplify and modify it or maybe totally replace it with my suggestion sent to the eye. Now it's a 2 minute cooldown, instant cast and 10 yard ranged attack thingy. You draw sand to the eyes of your enemy, it damages the target for 5% of their health and also blind them for 2 seconds. Just like the rogue blind but a lower version. The racial mount is also perfect. I love that we can remove the top cover too but you know we should be able to get a vulture mount right from its source. It can cost some gold but desert folk need donations too. They deserve it, right? And with that we are done with our bloodbound, the playable horde races. So let's move to our blood packs, our customization unlocks for the horde. We will take a look at how we can unlock more customization options for the old horde races. Again with the help of our current allied races and we will see how it could be done. Now for orcs we'll have Maghar customization options. Now in the blizzards version we just recruit alternate Draenor Maghars but in my version we can also recruit original Outland Maghar too. Maybe make them meet so they can join forces and we can give the alternate Magar a new place too, since they are practically refugees on Azeroth. Also, unlocking the Magar appearances should work both ways. Normal orcs should be able to use Magar appearances mixed and mashed if they want to. They will blend in with our green orcs anyways, according to lore. It's only logical that they teach others some appearances, tattoos and other stuff too, right? For trolls, we have Zandalari, Amani and Drakari. Now, yes, I seem to be cutting down one of the most popular allied races ever, but guys, we already have trolls and it's not just one clan anymore. So by adding Zandalari we can add unhunched straight looking body type and by adding Amani built up muscled body type to the troll roster. Additionally unlocking Zandalari would also unlock druid forms for them and Amani forms can just be recolors of them. We can also add Shirvala style cat form if you remember that. The long awaited tiger form can also be implemented with Amani or Zandalari too since it's the original troll cat form. These can be the new choices for recruiting these guys. We already have Zandalari recruitment and it's quite perfect. So we can add Amani recruitment based on Zandalar events. Maybe a visit to Zulaman and after a talk they can officially join and their bulky appearances can be unlocked for our troll players. Drakari are the ice trolls and they are the blue tinted version of the bulky Amani. Since Lich King is no more they are also free to join us too. We can write that. Oh and finally without recruiting any of these beards should be added to trolls already.
yes i am totally supporting this movement and credits go to these cool people who made these awesome visuals and troll beers are a must i'm totally supporting that and it's already in lore it's already used on NPC characters and it's already in game too. So why not give that to players, right? We deserve it. Thanks in advance. Let's continue our customization options for the Tauren, Taunka and High Mountain. Well, they look practically same without their features so we can do the same quests at high mountain to unlock and recruit them also we can be awarded one of those cool high mountain eagles when we do that of course all racial unlocks as i said should also award a racial mount to related with their unlocked appearance race also we already recruit the Taunka at Dragonblight during the Wrath of the Lich King events as Horde. So we can see the follow up of that. The Taunka clan who joined us, we can visit them and ask for help. Since they are already Horde and members of the Horde, they will just become playable. Besides, since we don't see unique Taunka female skins, their new leader can be a female and can have a unique female Taunka model and that can also be introduced like that too. And finally, the big bomb. Forsaken and for the Forsaken, all of the undead, including the Dark Ranger skins. Again, this may be quite controversial but for a long time in lore the forsaken are not just lorder and humans anymore they consist of almost all of the humanoid mortal races of azeroth but of course we have to tone that down a bit so we can use what we already have with death knights but risen as forsaken undead so when we unlock this appearance option, we should be able to play as an undead forsaken version of any playable race. Yes, that's right. Of course, the undead version should not have every skin color and customization choices of the original race, but instead some good old undead forsaken customizations like being without a chin, etc. Think of an undead gnome with forsaken customizations. Now you know what I mean. As a very nice bonus, this way we can also passively unlock the long awaited Dark Ranger skins. Humans, Blood Elves and or High Elves with red eyes and undead skins and features are practically Dark Rangers. So, that's it. So, I'm saying this again. Please, troll beards. And while we're at it, uh, the straight posture option for the undead and trolls too. Please, build it. Come on. We all need that and deserve that. Thanks a lot in advance. And with those final suggestions and requests, I guess that's all. I've talked about all of the races I would do instead of Blizzard's Allied Races version. Of course, uh, there are a lot more options, probable choices and Lots of races wanted by players, even some very plausible fun arts have been made for those. So I haven't made a specific graphic or put any images for those. If you want, you can search Google 
with the formula x allied race and come up with a lot of examples. So, because of that interest, we have to mention some of those. I'll just ad lib here about each race as shortly as I can and what I personally think about them. Sun Lane, Alvin Vampires. Note to our great Christy Golden here and her creations from Ravenloft books. It's her own invention, you know. In WoW though, they are the fallen followers of Kaltas, raised by Arthas the Lich King into his servitude, led by Blood Queen Lanatel and the Blood Princess. They were almost going to join the Horde if Draven was not killed by Alliance, but it didn't happen. As a playable race, that could maybe open the door. So I say why not, but because of the Dark Ranger team that I have offered, it's surpassing that, also covering all these options, because they are, as I said, undead elves, and in-game NPC and mobs are using Death Knight, Blood Elf and Night Elf models in ICC2. So if we add undead elf option to the Forsaken, as I have suggested, then it will also automatically cover these two, both as lore and in technicality. Satir, interestingly, especially with those new female Satir models that came out with Warcraft 3 Reforged, it became a popular fan theory that they can be an allied race too. But in reality, it's not very plausible. They are in a mob mode a lot. Also, we don't see many armor-wearing satyrs too. They are too demonized, too corrupted, in the same sense with Manari Eredar, the more demon-looking ones. Not very playable. If we alter them to look playable, they will not look like satyrs, just demonic night elves. And for those you have demon hunters. I'd love to get more elf looking elves and high elves and highborn clearly fill that roster, nightborn too. And that's why I wouldn't say yes to satyr as a playable race. The Alteraki, meaning Alterac humans. Just like Kultirans, in lore they have their nice lore and they can be added to Horde. Like we add Lightbound Orcs to Alliance. After all, they were traitors to the old Alliance. In lore it's quite plausible, but they also need some distinct looks. To make them a different playable race or even a customization unlock like I have suggested but this way not very likely. Naga just like Satyr maybe even worse not very playable lower part of the armor is not there even worse than Mechanorms, and personally I would prefer their own Highborn Earth versions. I mean, if there could be a design where they can go in and out of Elf forms, like Worgen, Queen Ashara could do that, but you know, she is one of the strongest spellcasters on Azeroth, so not sure playable Naga could do that, and even if they could, it's still a maybe. Overall, not likely. Now, Jinyu and or Furbolg. On the technical side, Furbolg is a lot more plausible with their relatively easy to apply skeleton rigs. They can use Pandaren combined with Tauren and possibly 
have original models like that way. But lore-wise, Jinyu are also a great addition. But they mostly use the Night Elf skeleton rings and neither have proper female models, but again, both can get help from Pandaren and Night Elf female skeletons, so some small work has to be done to make them look more unique and customizable. By the way, Jinyu also has that Ankuan option with Battle for Azeroth, and they can be added to their customizations, so they would look even more unique if players want the choice. That can also be unlocked like our other similar customization unlocks. But to summarize, production wise both are equally a bit of work. But I guess if done properly they would both be very nice additions. I didn't mention them all here as playable races. But there are of course other probable choices too. I'll mention the last ones here, the fun ones, but between these two, Jinyu and Furball, I couldn't personally choose, so if any one of them could be playable, i leave the choice to you. You can type it at comments, maybe we can make a poll in Twitter too, so <laughs> if it gets more than 3 votes we would have an idea. Then we will see. Now, Tuskar, if Furbolg wins against Jinyu in that poll, these guys can be playable too. I mean, for Taliesin, I would choose them, but for now, does not seem very likely, and sadly, I did not see too much requests for them or any plausible concepts of fan arts showing them as a playable race. But maybe I did not come across those hidden gems. If there are any, send them to me, I'd love to see those. Quillbore? Well, just like Satyr and other mob races, they don't seem that playable, not very tempting, and I guess not many players would choose them unless they would have some incredibly overpowered racials, so I say highly unlikely. And the last one, Murloc. Alright, now, this is a very, very tough spot. Some would say, but I won't say that. I mean, come on, not even a proper April Fool's joke, sorry, but most clear no for me. I love their pups and pets as pets and I can't stop clicking them but you know as playable races go no 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 <laughs> no more likes finally as allied races system goes in addition to all these races we have seen heritage armors with the allied races we could unlock them and we even had those for some of the old races too. So, while ending, I will make one last small how I would do it part for the heritage system. I have asked this online to Warcraft devs, I guess once or twice, but could not get an answer as you can see from the tweet here. So, as our last subject, let's theorize how we can make them happen, if given the chance. Now, I'm not saying armor, I'm saying system, because heritage armors are a great idea. But, first of all, just like how Maghar had they should all have at least three color tints, pant and robe options. That should be by default. So all armors could be worn by all classes, either warrior or priest, 
A plate looking armor being able to be worn by a priest is quite ridiculous. So at least give it a robe like option and it would look more proper than you hide shoulders, right? Also, and as the most important suggestion, when unlocked, they should award heritage weapon appearances too. Yes, please. We have been teased by these weapons a lot of times. First with Void Elf and Nightborn weapons, then later with Blood Elf weapons. Some other stuff have also appeared with Warfronts, but never made it in game to players. And like those Night Elf NPC armors, some of the weapons, even the lately introduced basic starter weapons, they didn't came for players. So don't do that, Blizzard. You made us sad pandas. We were waiting for those. So if we can fix the heritage system like this, then also both armors and weapons should be open for use by all races. All the races on your account. Old and new. After unlocked, like the racial mounts. They are not really that easy to unlock and I love the method. It's fair and it's quite logical so it should mean something and we should be able to shove them off with every possible character. We should be able to mix and match them, use weapons with one, some armor pieces with other, use fitting sets for fitting classes and specs. For example, I would love to use that high mountain set with my troll shaman. I would love to use warglaive looking nightborn spell swords with my demon hunter. Oh, and by the way, another small request, please change the warglaives back into one-handed swords again so everyone can loot and mock them, please. Of course, the racial appearance unlocks that I have suggested should unlock both the related mounts and their related quests and the option to work on their heritage armors and weapons too. It can be like this. You get your achievement and unlock Maghar or racial appearance for orcs. You create a character with those new Maghar racial appearances. Now you have a choice to start any orc from level 10 too, just like how the allied races can. And if you level that new post achievement character from 10 to 50 without any level boost, you will unlock Magar heritage armor and weapon appearances too. Easy peasy. It's that simple. And with that final suggestion salvo, now I'm sure I have talked about every little detail regarding the allied races concept and how I would do it if I was given the chance. As I have said, this is mostly just for fun and to give constructive feedback. As a casual and long-time role player, not to criticize, not to talk down the current things in game or anything like that. Think it like an alternate suggestion, a what if version, as you have seen. These are not all my own ideas either. I guess we can say great minds think alike, right? I just combined all these ideas in a package as an alternate or, you know, an enhancement to the allied races concept. I try to think of these like a thing that can be added to the game today. 
announced with next big content patch. I would be crazy excited if I would hear these are coming. So I hope you liked what I thought of it and felt that possibility of excitement too. Of course for igniting this spark that made people to talk, think about and work on all of these fun arts, concepts and me to talk this much a very heartfelt love, big big hugs and kisses to all of the extremely talented Warcraft devs for all of their hard work. Thanks a lot. So that's all for now. Take care, have fun and please stay safe, stay healthy so you'll be able to play more games. If you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe with the bell click thingy. I don't know when the next episode will happen but I can reveal that it will be about covenants and how I would do it. Until then, I will see you. Take care.